Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for coming back to watch this video, especially if you're a returning subscriber. If you're new to my channel, welcome and I hope you subscribe and I hope you love the videos and the content that I'm putting out. So today I'm going to do part two of the OSPAP series that I'm doing on how to become a UK registered pharmacist from a non-EEA country. If you've not watched my previous video, I would really encourage you to watch it. I'm going to link it somewhere up here or maybe here and I'll link it in the down bar and also in the description box. And I'm also planning to do um, a playlist. I probably have done it by now just so I can put all the pharmacy related videos on there. Just so if you come to my channel and that's what you want to watch, then it'll be there. And if you want to watch beauty and lifestyle or hair videos, all the playlists will be there and available for you. So thank you so much. And I'll get into this video. So hopefully you should have watched part one. And today is part two. We're going to talk about choosing OSPAP providers. So OSPAP is the Overseas Pharmacy Assessment Program. And um, I talked about, you know, preparing your documentation in the first video. So I won't go back into it. I'll just go straight into this one because I'm assuming that you've already watched that video. So by now, or if you're watching this, I'm sure you're wondering what university should I choose for my OSPAP? And, you know, just thinking about how good they are. The thing is, I only went obviously <laughs> to one of the universities, but I know that all the universities are pretty good because I do have friends that have gone to some of the universities and obviously they're pharmacists now and they've spoken highly of the schools that they've attended. So in the UK, there are only five universities that offer the OSPA program. And that is a very small number compared to how many other universities they are. I believe, I believe there were maybe six or seven at some point, um, but two schools are no longer on the list and that's why they're just five now. So um, in no particular other, I'll tell you what the schools are. We have University of Brighton, which is in Brighton. We have Kingston University, which is in Kingston, and that's in um, Greater London, outside or the outskirts of London. We have University of Hertfordshire, which is also close to London, but it's very much on the outskirts. We have Aston University, which is in Birmingham. And um, we also have um, University of Sunderland, which is Opnath. I almost forgot that, which is Opnath. So if you're wondering, I went to University of Brighton and that's because it was close to London. And as I mentioned before, I lived in London. I was actually working full time. So I needed um, a school that was close to London so I could still keep my job and also go to school. Um, when you are applying for the OSPAP, um, there's a provider form. Um, it's like a preference form to say what universities you want to choose. And obviously it would depend on a lot of factors. It could be that you already know someone who went to the university and you want to go there. And that's totally fine. You have to rank it. But it doesn't matter because um, the, all the schools would actually invite you. And then it would give you a chance to find out if you really want to go to the schools or not. So the first thing I would say is make sure you go on the school's websites and just check you know, get a feel of the school, check through their websites, check all the pages um, referring to OSPAP. If there are emails, you can email them and ask, okay, specific question. How many days is the course run? I've written some notes as usual, just so I don't miss out anything. So basically most of the OSPAP courses start around September or October, which is why, as I said earlier in my previous video, you need to start early. So by, I wanna say by July, which is the latest date you can get your um, application to GPHC. That should have been done. But if I were you, I would do it pretty much early just so I have a chance to get other things, which I'll tell you about um, in the school. So one of the things you need to consider, obviously, when choosing providers or OSPA providers is where do you want to live in the UK? And of course, this kind of um, question needs to be answered based on so many other factors. For example, do you have people living in the UK already? Do you have friends? Have you come here before? Do you have family here? Or do you have people that would be happy for you to live with them? So those are things that you need to consider. You need to also consider, um, are there people like you in that area? Is it a diverse area? Or you need to consider, you know, the cost of leaving, which is really, really important because obviously if you're living anywhere near London, or close to London, the cost of living will be relatively higher. And if you're living anywhere outside of London, it will be lower, but not so low, obviously. It will be lower compared to um, places that are in London or close to London. Another thing to consider, obviously, is 
how many days a week um, that they're going to be holding their courses. For me, this question was important because I mentioned that I was also working. So I needed a school that had um, just two days a week. So I went to Brighton and they had Thursday and Fridays, which was when I needed to attend. For Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, obviously they'll keep you busy with like assignments and things to do. So it's not like you're not going to be studying. You will be studying a lot, but at least you're not physically present in the school. And it did take attendance, which was really, really important for the course because it's a full-time course. So other schools, I think Kingston University does about two or three days a week. Um, some other schools do full time, so you have to be there from Monday to Friday. I'm not really sure of all of them, which is why you need to go and check on the website for the specific schools. Another thing you want to consider, obviously, is living cost, which I mentioned earlier. So, for example, um, in Sunderland, um, accommodation is relatively cheaper transportation will be cheaper obviously if you wanted somewhere like Brighton um, I, I mean I didn't live in Brighton I lived in London but Brighton is also a relatively expensive place um, to live in but it's so beautiful I mean they have a lovely beach there as well um, so you need to consider that Hertfordshire is good as well but it's also on the outskirts of London and it's not very like it's not very close to London as such but I think accommodation is relatively cheaper there compared to other places in London. If you wanted to go to Kingston as well, you need to also consider. And then another thing to consider, which is so important and most people will, that's like a big factor for them, school fees. Now, most of the universities have expensive school fees for the OSPA program. So I need to mention this because I do get quite a few questions when people are looking at the fees. There are two types of the OSPA program. So there's the OSPA program, which is a diploma. So it's a postgraduate diploma. And then there's the OSPA course, which is a postgraduate master's course. Now, there are differences in the fees and some um, obviously the postgraduate diploma is cheaper than the postgraduate MSc, right? Or the MSc version. Now, most people would want to go for the cheaper option but if you're coming from another country a non-EEA country whereby you would need a student visa and you're hoping to switch from your student visa to a work visa then you need to choose the MSc version and <laughs> the thing is if you don't choose it you would not be able to convert your student visa to a work visa so that's why it's really really important and um, to do that so that's it but I didn't do the MSc version obviously because as I said I already lived in the UK um, so I didn't have to do that but another um, example of when you can do the postgraduate diploma if you are even coming from outside of the country would be maybe you're coming into the UK but you're coming in with your husband who might have a work visa so in that way you can choose the postgraduate diploma bit because you don't need his you don't need um to convert to a working visa because you would go on your husband's visa if that makes sense that I don't know if I'm making sense but do you get what I mean that's the only time um that you would need a postgraduate diploma or that's the only time you can choose that as an option other than that you need to choose the MSc version in fact even if you choose a postgraduate diploma the school usually will contact you and say look you need to choose the MSc version which is more expensive I'm going to try and put a screenshot of all the fees for the different universities, but I have written some of them down. So I know for Aston University, which is in Birmingham, the postgraduate diploma is £11,700. And for the MSc, it's about £17,500. For Brighton, which is the school I went to, their postgraduate diploma is £12,120. And the MSc version is £16,218. For Hertfordshire, as as far as I'm concerned, it looks like they only do the postgraduate diploma bit, and that is thirty and and that is thirteen thousand five hundred and thirty pounds. Kingston for the diploma, it's twelve thousand four hundred pounds, and the MSc version is seventeen thousand two hundred pounds. For Sunderland, the postgraduate diploma is nine thousand pounds, and the MSc version is thirteen thousand five hundred pounds, and they do give up to £1,000 scholarships. And that brings me to the next question. What kind of finance can I access? Now, to be honest, there are not many scholarships for OSPERP programs, um, but there are some that are available, especially if you apply early and get your admission. Obviously, you can't get a scholarship if you don't have your admission and everything all sorted out. So I know Sunderland, University of Sunderland, is very good at giving substantial scholarships um, 
they would usually do like a reduction of fees, which is really great. I mean, I went on the website and just played around with a few questions and they said I could get £1,000 um, discount. I mean, I'm not doing it now, but I just went on the website just to see what kind of discounts or scholarships one could get. And that was available, which is pretty, pretty good. Um, Brighton, I know they have scholarships, um, which you can apply if you apply early. You can also um, check for in your home country what kind of scholarships are available. But some of the scholarships you know you would usually require you to go back to your country. And if you're coming here to do OSPUP, it means you want to stay here in the UK. So I don't know. Like you can look around on the school's website. Most of them have um, a scholarship page. So I would encourage you to go in there, speak to the finance department and say, okay, what do you offer? You can email them and you'll be surprised at what they can tell you they can offer. It might be full or it might be part. And that's good. I know in Brighton, um, for me, I didn't get any scholarships whatsoever. I did try, I didn't get it. Um, so I did have to pay full time. I paid for the postgraduate diploma at the time. I think it's a almost just under 11,000 something. But because I paid full, I got um, a fee rebate, which was maybe 500 pounds back. So if you pay full, you get your money back. But if, you ha if you're paying in installments, then I don't think you get the um, rebates that it gives. So that's something to explore. Um, but yeah, so that's mainly about how to choose providers. You're also going to consider a couple of other things, obviously, um, you know, when I mentioned about cost of living, when you're applying for your visa, if you apply, if you're applying to any of the schools that are in London or close to London or places where they call Greater London. And so, for example, I think Kingston will fall under that. Um, I'm not sure if Hertfordshire will, but it just means that the amount or the cost of living that you have to put in your account for your visa would be increased as opposed to if you apply to schools that are outside of London if that makes any sense. Um, I don't know what exact figures are, but I will encourage you to check on the gov.uk website and look at the visa options that they have and all the points that you have to get. Um, it's been a long time since I did that. I was like since 2010 and I haven't had a student visa since then. So, but I will put all the links and you can check it out for yourself. If you want me to do a video on student visa, I will try and do one. I would read it up because it's not something I'm very familiar with because I haven't done them. In terms of the structure of the OSPAT program, I mean, I didn't go to all the schools, but I know Aston was a really good school as well. Many people have said it's good. It also has a diverse community. So there are different kinds of, you know, BAME people there. In Brighton, Brighton was amazing as well. Uh, I really liked it because with the fees, I got loads of books. And with the books, um, they're really useful to me, even now as a pharmacist. And they are really expensive books. Um, so I really enjoyed being in Brighton. And I know that all the other schools, they have really good structure. Um, the GPHC has a link talking about each of the schools and what they offer. With Brighton, it was really good. So we went to school Thursday and Fridays. On Fridays, we also always had tests. <laughs> it was so intense. Like, it would work super, super hard. That is just something I have to tell you, but you would absolutely enjoy it. So we learned a lot about the England pharmacy laws in England. We learned a lot about um, the dispensaries and how um, community pharmacy would work in the UK. And um, we learned a lot about, you know, drug interactions, calculations of things that you wouldn't think you'd calculate. And then clinical, we also had practical sessions. So we went um, to hospitals to do some observations they taught us it was just it was such a good program to be honest um and i think we had one course with the other um pharmacy um uk graduates or about to be graduates so we had um some courses to get a one or two and it was nice meeting uh, you know the other pharmacy students there as well and it was just it was such a good program it was intense we had two exams, first semester and second semester, and the program for the postgraduate diploma finished in June. And those who went doing the MSc, you'll do a project and that will finish around September. So yeah, I hope that was really, really useful. If you have any questions, um, just let me know. I don't want this video to be too long. My next video will be talking about a couple of other things like the pre-registration, how to prepare, how to get a job for it. If you want me to talk about visa, just let me know in the comment section. And I hope this video is useful and I'll see you in my next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.